Relative velocity lesson 3. Relative motion of two moving objects. This is where we learn how two moving objects move relative to each other. Whether will they just simply be crossing each other's path or will they be colliding. Okay. Before we move on to the first example, of course the best way to learn is through an example as I always say. Uh, before we move into that, Okay, we need to first recap on what we have learned about relative velocity so far. Okay, insofar as we have learned, um, velocity v a b means the velocity of a relative to b. Okay, is uh, given by this formula v a minus away the v b, as per what we have discussed in lesson one when we talk about parallel motion. Okay, um, now this is going to be important for us in uh, this. Part this section of uh, relative velocity. Okay. Most importantly is uh, the definition of what is v a b altogether. What do you understand about velocity of a relative to b? Now this is very very important. So let us just recap on what is this all about. Velocity of a relative to b simply means that the b is the observer. Okay. While looking at a. Alright, so it is the velocity of A relative to B means B is the observer, B is looking at A, how A moves. Okay, so obviously when you are the observer, you would think that you are not moving. Okay, so this is a very important concept, we will proceed on from here. Okay, so without further ado, let's just jump into the first example and let's see how we're going to apply all this. Example 1, at a particular instance, two ships P and Q, P, Q are 5 kilometers apart. P is moving at an angle of 30 degrees at the speed of 10 kilometers per hour, while Q is moving at a speed of 8 kilometers per hour at an angle of 60 degrees. Okay, the job here is to find the velocity of P relative to Q. Okay, as per what we have discussed earlier on since lesson 1, the velocity of P relative to Q is given by this formula vp minus away the vq, isn't it? Okay, but here we can't simply take 10 minus away 8 because the vp and vq they are no longer parallel. Okay, we can do this when we're talking about uh, parallel motion. So in this case we can't do it because they are not parallel anymore. Okay, so what can we do? Right, what you must understand is that vp is a vector and vq as well is a vector. Okay, and this VPQ, which is a vector VP minus away the vector VQ, is also as well a vector. Okay, so what we do here, the first thing we must do is to draw the vector diagram, or some call it the velocity diagram. Okay, so a vector diagram okay, is very different from what we're going to see from here, because this has got an element of distance, which we totally don't want. Okay, we only want to look at uh, how the two vectors relate to each other using this. Okay, so how do we even get started? Well, first thing, okay, we always draw a line. Okay, so we draw our VP this way, alright, this angle of 30 degrees, and this is our VP. Okay, as for our VQ, Okay, because it's slightly higher at 60 degrees. So this angle here is 60 degrees. So this is our VQ. Based on what we have learned from vectors, okay, VP is this vector and VQ is this vector. When we are talking about VP minus VQ, it will be this vector. Okay, so this will be our VPQ. This kind of a way of thinking comes from our subtraction law. Okay, so I hope you are pretty familiar with that. If you are not familiar with uh, subtraction law, please do go back and uh, take a look at um, vectors. Okay, the lesson on vectors. Alright, so basically this is what we have. Okay, VP, of course, uh, we got to fill in the blanks next, isn't it? So VP is uh, 10 kilometers per hour, while VQ is 8 kilometers per hour. Okay, now to find the velocity, the speed of VPQ will be, okay, let's just denote this as x kilometers per hour. Okay, so how to do this? As per what we have seen in previous examples, in example 2, uh, I mean, uh, lesson 2. 
Okay, and so every time we need to solve for anything in the triangle, we have to have an angle inside the triangle. So this is a straight line, and if this is 60 degrees, this is 30 degrees, that will make this, of course, 90 degrees, isn't it? Okay, so if this is a 90 degrees, this is a right angle triangle. To find x, I don't think is as serious as a problem to you. Okay, so x, we can simply use Pythagoras' theorem. So we since we know that x square oops x square is equal to eight square plus ten square, isn't it? So to find x simply it will be a calculator work. Okay, from a calculator you will get twelve point eight one alright kilometers per hour. So this will be our first part of the answer, the speed of P relative to Q. Okay, next we have to find the direction. Okay, so direction of course refer to the bearing of this angle, uh, this vector. I mean, okay, so this vector v p q. Okay, the bearing of this vector. We go to the tail of the arrow, we draw a north. Okay, and therefore the bearing will be of course given by this angle. Okay, now how are we going to find this angle? Isn't it? Well, this is when you have to think about how to solve triangles. There. In fact, a couple of ways you can find this angle. Okay, but I'm just going to show you one that is the shortest. Now, this is the hor hor horizontal line. Okay, what we do is we draw another horizontal line across here, and therefore we know that this angle is a 90 degrees as well, isn't it? So, if we can find this little blue angle here, okay, we add the 90 degrees here. And we basically get the angle, uh, the bearing, isn't it? So this little blue angle, as well, is also okay. The same angle here, isn't it? Okay, because this is uh, parallel to this. Okay, we draw two horizontal lines that's parallel to this. So we can see this is an alternate angle. So this angle, this blue angle here, is the same as this blue angle here. Okay, pardon me for my drawing. I wish I can draw a little bit bigger. Okay, but it'll take a long time for you to load. Okay, so right, let's just try to make do with this. Okay, so this angle here, how are we going to find this? Well, think about it. We can find this big angle, isn't it? Okay, so we shall call this big angle alpha okay now how are we going to make use of alpha to find this little blue angle here think about it if this is 30 degrees that will make this 30 degrees as well isn't it okay again alternate angles okay so if this is 30 this will be 30 and if I have a way to find alpha minus away 30 I'll get this little blue angle and if I can get this little blue angle, I will know this little blue angle as well. And then I plus the 90 degrees, I will get a bearing. Okay, so now everything else hinges on this uh, alpha. How to get this alpha then? Well, this is a right angle triangle, isn't it? So no problem at all. Well, you have got opposite side, which is 8, adjacent side, which is 10. So opposite and adjacent, of course, means tangent. So tangent alpha is equal to 8 over 10. So from your calculator, you get your alpha as 38.66 degrees. And therefore, this little blue angle here, okay, will be 8.66 degrees, isn't it? And therefore, the required bearing that we're supposed to find will be equal to 90 plus 8 point six six degrees which will give us zero nine eight point six six degrees okay so this will be our part A's answer when we talk about the velocity of P relative to Q alright let's go on to part B now this is when it, it is a uh, almost an entirely new type of questions to you okay the distance apart in meters when P is due south of Q now what does this mean? Okay, so let us uh, scroll down a little bit because we need more space. Oh, okay, let us uh, keep the diagram in view. Okay, I think we need that. Okay, this is when we need to incorporate this concept of um, distance diagram. Okay, you need to draw another diagram. Okay, to totally talk about distance. Okay, so a distance diagram. 
how do we even construct a distance diagram? Well, the first step is always to figure out the initial position of a P and Q. So as per what the diagram here shows us, P is to the left of Q. So we have P here, and then we have Q here. Okay, so this is the initial position of P and Q. Alright, now, the next thing to do is to base on what we have found out, or rather what we have drawn, okay, from our vector diagram from part A. Okay, there's something here that's very, very important to us, and that would be this relative vector. Alright, so this relative vector of V, P, Q is extremely important to us. Now, first of all, we need to understand what does this V, P, Q mean. Okay, V, P, Q tells us that according to Q, P is moving downwards. Now, this is where it becomes extremely difficult for people to accept. What do you mean? What do you mean according to Q, all right, P is moving downwards? I thought, you know, according to the diagram that's given to us, both are moving upwards, isn't it? I mean, P is moving this way, Q is moving that way. So what do you mean according to Q, P is moving downwards? Okay, the best way to explain this, I find, okay, is to uh, show you exactly what's going on. All right, here we go. This is our ship P, and this is our ship Q. Okay, so this is how ship P and Q are both moving, according to the question, of course. All right, so this is their path, and you know this is what's going on. Now, let's focus our attention on ship Q, shall we? Okay, so pretend for a moment that you're in ship Q. All right? Now this is what's happening. Okay? So if you're on ship Q, first thing you notice that well P is to your left. Now but as you move and as P move, okay, you realize that hey, you know, it appears that P is actually a bit lower now. But as you move further, P appears to be even lower. And as you can see there comes a time where ship P is directly beneath you. Okay, so remember you're the observer, you are in ship Q. Okay, this one. Alright, so this is how it makes sense. Even though both of them are moving upwards, okay, but according to Q, alright, so you are Q, and you are looking at the ship P, and every point in time, this is how ship P will move according to your perspective. Alright, so back to the question that we have here, okay, now, Therefore, now we, we have a better idea of what this vector means, isn't it? Okay, according to Q, P is moving downwards. Okay, so in our distance diagram, how does this information come in? Okay, according to Q, that means Q thinks that Q is not moving, isn't it? So P is moving downwards. This way. Okay, so this is the vector that we have to transplant from our vector diagram into our distance diagram. So this is our V, P, Q. Okay, of course, everything else about this vector we can transplant as well. Okay, we can transplant the speed. So V, P, Q's speed is 12.81 kilometers per hour, if, if we need that in the, in the event that we need this. Okay, alright, so according to Q, P is moving downwards, and what the question is asking us for is the distance apart when P is due south of Q. When P is due south of Q, it means that when P, that there come a point, okay, where your P will be directly underneath Q. So this is what we are interested in, okay, this distance. Alright, so of course we'll let this distance be Y kilometers Okay, because everything else is in kilometers, so of course we leave this in kilometers. So, do so you think it's that difficult to find y at the first place? I mean, come on, take a look at this triangle. This is a right angle triangle, isn't it? So, this right angle triangle, you got this uh, um, distance of 5 kilometers, and uh, you're looking for this y kilometers. What's the problem here? We're missing something, isn't it? We're missing an angle. Okay, so we need an angle inside the triangle to solve. Now, where are we going to get an angle? Well, remember we spent a lot of time finding this little blue angle here? Okay, now this little blue angle is basically the angle measured against the horizon. So, these 5 kilometers, this PQ is horizontal, isn't it? And therefore, okay, this angle will be the same as this little blue angle here. So, therefore, this angle here is our 8.66 
degrees. Again, this is one part of the vector that we can transplant over into our distance diagram. Now, to find y is extremely easy now. Okay, opposite adjacent, so tangent 8.66 degrees is equal to y over 5. Oops, I'm sorry, 5. Yep, okay, and y will be therefore from your calculator you will get 0 0.76 but bear in mind this is in kilometer therefore in meters it will become 761.5 meters okay what does this mean well this means that there come a point in time as your p and q are moving okay right from the beginning P and Q are moving this direction, but according to Q, okay, as per what we've seen in the animation, according to Q, P is moving downwards, so there will come a time whereby P is directly underneath, and when that happens, okay, they are 761 kilometers, oh, sorry, 761.5 meters apart, I mean. Okay, now, some of you may ask, um, you know, this veloc this vector diagram at the first place you know how do you know that uh you have to tilt down this way you get I me mean? as in uh, vp this way vq that way well vp minus vq i mean you're talking about 8 and 10 uh 8 and 10 right so 8 and 10 is like quite difficult to gauge which one is longer which one is shorter isn't it i mean and somehow you have an angle of you know, 60 degrees and 30 degrees. You're not going to draw scale drawing using projector and all. So how do you decide, you know, w because, you know, if you were to draw it tilt down, you get the right answer. But what if I draw it tilt up? Then I won't get the right answer, isn't it? I mean, okay. So the trick to do, I mean, to, to figure this out is always to read the question as a whole. Okay, let's just analyze the question a little bit. So we know that there are two ships, okay, this type of question are uh, two moving object type of questions. So yada yada, we're supposed to find the velocity of P relative to Q, which is no problem. The problem lies in drawing this triangle, isn't it? So like I said earlier on, how do you know whether you should tilt down or go horizontal or, or tilt up? Okay, so the hint lies in part B. Okay, part B of the question. You have to read the question and you see this. The distance apart when P is due south of Q. Now, what does this tell you? This tells you that, you know, P is going to be due south of Q. So, according to Q, P will have to move down. Okay, so according to Q, P will have to go down in order to be due south of Q. So, this is how you, you know, sort of decide whether which way to tilt, which way to slant.